While I spent most of my childhood creating my own Benten aliens, Benten wasn't the only influence that fueled my passion for character and creature design. Another major source of inspiration was Pokemon, a game that captivated me with its concept of capturing a wide selection of creatures that range from small and cute to large and powerful, much like Ben's transformations. So in this video I'm combining my love for both Benten and Pokemon by creating starter Pokemon inspired by three of Ben's iconic aliens, Heat Blast, Wild Vine and Rib Jaws. All three represent the core elements of Pokemon starters, being grass, fire and water. And even though water hazard might seem like the obvious choice for a water type, since he can actually manipulate water unlike Ribjaws, I wanted to steer clear from recreating the exact same Pokemon starters that OR Ash did. And honestly, Ribjaws was always my favorite, so this is just an excuse. When making these three Pokemon, I didn't want them to be just carbon copies of Tree of Ben's aliens, I wanted them to be their own unique thing, inspired by them. Well very much inspired by them, but also have some details of their own. Just like other starters, I wanted them to have their own unique teaming. The team I chose? Greek Gods. So let's start out with our grass starter, Sproutot. Name being a mix of both Sprout, a baby plant, and Tot, meaning a small child. Design-wise, Sproutot has a big round head, not too different from a lima bean, and two large baby eyes, unlike Wildvine, who only has one. But don't worry, we'll get to that detail later down the line. His arms are two little leaves, and the third leaf on his head is meant to look like the little appendage on Wildvine's head. Two little berries on his shoulders, like the two orbs on Wildvine's shoulders, and four roots as legs, just like Wildvine. Only difference being the brown color, just to help him pop out more. Sproutot, the sapling Pokemon. Their small size and ability to blend in with vegetation makes Sproutot a rare sight to see. Majority of Pokemon collectors throughout the region have still never seen a Sproutot in the wild, or more likely, have never noticed them. Once you've leveled up your Sproutot enough, you have Sporsephony, a mix of Spore, the method in which plants and fungi reproduce, and Persephone, the wife of Hades and more importantly, daughter of Demeter, the Greek goddess of harvest and agriculture. Sporsephony now has more leaves on its heads which covers one of its eyes, told you we'll get to that detail. More berries are now growing on its shoulders along with a leafy color just like Wildvine has in the reboot. The arm leaves are now longer, making them more useful along with the legs which are all tangled up, meant to represent both how Persephone is basically locked away in the underworld in Greek mythology, and how Sporsephony still isn't used to controlling its ability to grow out its roots. Sporsephony, the vine Pokemon. Sporsephony's berries are said to be one of the sweetest tasting fruits in the world, only issue being they're also known to be highly explosive if harvested incorrectly, making farming for these berries a very well paying job, if not also very dangerous. Finally, Sporsephony has fully evolved into Venite, mix of vine, Demeter, and the scientific name for a Venus flytrap. Since Venite is mostly based on the Greek goddess Demeter, I based most of its design on the Gwen version of Wildvine and Omniverse, to give it a more feminine look. Mostly the leaves around the waist to help it look like a dress, and also the curls around the side of its head. I now finally added the Venus flytrap-like collar around Venite's neck, and the berries on his shoulders now grew into the same eggplant-like bombs Wildvine has. The legs are now untangled to show how the Pokemon is now fully evolved and in control of its powers. I also gave it carnivorous plant mouths on each of its hands, like sock puppets since both Sproutot and Sporsephony have leaves as arms, and flytrap mouths are just modified leaves. Venite, the forest Pokemon. Venite's roots can stretch out for miles on end, and help bring balance to forests by taking nutrients from plants that have too much and giving to those in need. Farmers have been using Venite to help with their crops for generations. For the fire starter we have Colit, mix of coal, lit, and also little. There wasn't really much I could change from Heat Blast, since he's just an on-fire rock man, so I focused on giving him baby features, with a big head and little nubby arms. I gave Cole lit cracks down his eyes to make it look more like tears, since I want him to have the personality of a small scared baby, since usually they do that more with water types, and I wanted to break the stereotype a little bit. Only real other different feature is that I made the rock color a bit bigger, cause as you'll see soon I want that to be the main focus of the evolution line. Colet, the flame Pokemon. Colet are extremely sensitive and will easily burst into flaming tears when upset. Many trainers have lost their homes to a Colet that got too scared or upset. Once Colet evolves, he becomes Pyromite. Mix of Pyro, meaning fire, Pyronite, being Heat Blast species, Granite, being a rock made from dried magma, and also Mite. Since now instead of being a scared crybaby, Pyromite is a headstrong heroic Pokemon with the personality of a superhero. Because of that, I moved the cracks from under his eyes to the size of his head to look like a stereotypical superhero mask, and the rocky color now looks like a puffed up chest to show off his personality. Last major detail now is his mouth is now similar to that of a Furnace Door. Pyromite the hot rock Pokemon. 
Pyromites fly around in a fiery blast looking for any trainer or Pokemon in need of help. Their heroic nature makes them great companions for firefighters and law enforcement. Pyromite now evolves into Infernus, a mix of Infernal and Furnace. Now the Pokemon has transitioned from superhero to supervillain, aesthetically speaking obviously. Infernus is mostly based off Hades, the Greek god of the underworld, and now has a more monstrous appearance, his large chest now becoming an enormous gaping jaw, and his head now also sports devilish horns. Mostly took inspiration for his bulky appearance from my own redesign of Heat Blast I did a while back, which was also inspired by Kevin Eleven's mutated form in the Ken 10 episode, so the villainous team fits in well. Infernus, the volcanic Pokemon. Despite their intimidating appearance, Infernus are gentle Pokemon that constantly regulate the heat of their flaming body to keep trainers safe from burns, while still keeping them warm on adventures. Last but not least we have Ripraff, a mix of Rip, which is also part of Rip Jaws, and also Riffraff, which is a word used to describe someone looked down on. He's just an angry little fish with legs, sort of like Walker Trout, with some Rip Jaws elements like the angler fish lure, large teeth and also webbed feet, but instead of hands he has toothed fins. I always really liked the stereotype of round little Pokemon with sharp teeth that would bite their own trainers like Totatile, Gibble and Fococo, so I really had to make one of the starters like them. Ripraff the landfish Pokemon. Ripraffs are extremely temperamental and known to bite their trainers constantly. Experts have figured out the easiest way to calm down a Ripraff is to soak it with cold water until they've calmed down. This however is only temporary. Train your snappy Ripraff enough and you get Lockjaw. Named after Lock, Scottish word for lake, also in reference to the Loch Ness Monster. Lockjaw being a type of muscle contraction that causes your jaws to clamp shut, and also the end part of rib jaws. Lockjaw now stands upright and has a punkish mohawk looking fin. His small flippers now have adapted into having large claws he uses for attacks, and his legs now lose a toe. Doesn't seem like an important detail for now, but trust me, it's gonna make sense soon. Lockjaw the sharp tooth Pokemon. Gangs of Lockjaws have been known to vandalize seaside villages by biting and scratching anything they can find. As soon as law enforcement arrives, they disappear back into the water where they came from. Finally, we get to Mosaidon. Mix of Ma, being the jaws of a vicious animal, Poseidon, the Greek god of the sea, and also Don being a suffix on a lot of scientific names for tooth. Mosaidon's arms have now fully developed from fins, with his legs now being completely gone. Sort of like how Ripjaws has both a land form and an ocean form, I wanted to show that in the Pokemon line. Mosaidon, the deep sea Pokemon. Although there are no recorded instances of Mosaidon attacking trainers, divers know to never venture into this Pokemon's territory on the chance they would be mistaken as prey and dragged into the darkest depths of the ocean. And those are the starters. If any of you have any ideas on how I could improve the concept and designs of these Pokemon, please leave a comment below. I would definitely love to turn this into a series where I can make an entire Pokemon reader inspired by Ben 10, including Route 1 Pokemon, Legendaries, and even Pokemon Trainers. So if that's something you're interested in, don't forget to subscribe and show your support. So, until next time, I'll see you all later.